So uh, today um, we transition uh, to uh, talking really more about community use cases um, and how we take the technology that we build with annotation and apply it to uh, solving problems um, for real people. And um, one of the most interesting uh, use cases for me is um, government, law, um, digital civil liberties, uh, and how we can apply annotation to reach into things, documents, um, matters of state, um, matters of people, uh, and um, be precise uh, and be critical about um, the things that, that are important to us and that uh, drive our governments and, and the way we work as people. Um, and one of the most interesting organizations to me and one of the most uh, um, organizations that's kind of showed up earliest uh, and has done the most, some of the most important work uh, in protecting, thinking about deeply and protecting um, our emerging digital civil liberties uh, is the Electronic Frontier Foundation. And uh, so when I um, uh, started putting together Hypothesis a couple years ago, we incorporated, uh, I, it, we had to put a board together, so I had to think, okay, who, uh, who should I ask uh, to be a board member for Hypothesis? Who would share my vision for um, what annotation could be and the potential of it and who would protect the essential kind of philosophical um, core of, of this because with a nonprofit is different from a for-profit but the for-profit is the shareholders that control the organization. The board is important but ultimately the shareholders have the power. Nonprofits are very different. The board has all the power and so you have to be really careful about the people that you ask to participate. Um, so I, uh, over the series of a couple conversations, um, got to know John, uh, John Perry, uh, and uh, over the course of about a year, asked if he might uh, be willing to be a board member for Hypothesis, and uh, I'm very grateful that he agreed. Um, so I'd like to welcome um, a, a really unique individual who sits at the nexus of uh, um, digital thinking uh, and uh, has led one of the most fascinating lives uh, of anybody that I've ever met. John Perry Barton. I, uh, I, for a variety of reasons, I, I've been terribly sleep short lately. I've been traveling a lot and, uh, and I'm in a major deficit. And so when Dan asked me if I'd drive in from Marin at 8.30 this morning, uh, it really tested my commitment to both Dan and this organization. <laughs> uh, I'd rather be dreaming. But the reason I'm here instead is that I have a dream and you folks are part of it, uh, intimately I think. And my dream is pretty simple. It's the same dream I've had since I discovered the internet back in about 1985. And that dream is that we will create a time, and, and maybe sooner than many people would think, in which anybody anywhere can know as much as they are intellectually capable of assimilating about any subject as is presently known to all of humanity. I mean, that, that, that some kid in Mali can know as much about some particular intricacy of proteinomics as he is capable of learning because the information will be available to him. Now, for a long time, I, I focused on just making sure that there was the necessary infrastructure literally, to, to bring that to him. And I've spent a great deal of time at the, at the EFF and continue to trying to change the publishing model and copyright model uh, that is, I think, the principal obstacle between that kid and knowing what can be known. 
but there's a much more complicated and subtle set of problems that you folks are dealing with, which have to do with creating the ecosystem of meaning, the metabolic sort of truth that makes it possible for that kid to have access to the good stuff and not be completely overwhelmed by the irrelevant and the untrue. And what the human race needs as much as anything else is a metabolic system for meaning and truth. And truth, I grant you, is tricky. I was sitting at a table yesterday with some intelligent and I think scientifically inclined people uh, who, were, who were hard pressed to admit that anything was a fact. I mean, I, there was, there's one fellow there who, who told me that he didn't think the periodic table consisted of facts. And I thought, well, okay, you know, then we're, we're pretty much at sea. Uh, I actually think that there are facts in the periodic table of elements, <laughs> but um, I'll go that far. But uh, I could understand what he was getting at. And it, it, I understand that within the, within the paradigm of, of larger human understanding, uh, there are some things that probably will turn out not to be objectively true that are generally believed to be now, and there's, you know, there's a problem with that. But the process by which we uh, alter the paradigm or, or expand the paradigm or, or adjust it properly is part of the process that you folks are engaging in here. If you can come up with ways to be instructively, briefly critical and point in the direction of what, what will be a better model for understanding reality, then we can be about this, this digestive process much more rapidly. I think of, the, of thought and, and society and culture as being no different from any other ecosystem. But in biological ecosystems, like a rainforest or a coral reef, what you have is a system for sorting meaning. And in that case, I would say that meaning consists of a photon. That's a meaningful thing. A system for sorting all those photons so that they end up in essentially the right place within a very complex system of interrelated operations. And I don't think there's any difference between that and elements of truth, genuine facts, and their sort through the system, the, the ecology of human thought taken as a whole. And I think that what you are doing and what you have the leverage to do even though you are a, a small group of people, you are a very smart small group of people who are on to something that I think is the right thing to be on if we're really going to achieve that dream. And uh, I'm very grateful to you. I think this is really hard work. Uh, just, just understanding what an, what an annotation might be. Uh, is not an easy thing. And trying to come up with a system that, that replaces or enhances peer review in a way that gets us closer to an understanding of what is, is not an easy thing to do. But I think that you are here and from all evidence I see you were doing it and I'm very grateful to you for that.